Oh. <laughs> All right, this meeting's being recording. recorded. Uh, welcome everyone to Hiking 101, Tips and Tricks to Not Get Eaten by Bobcats, hosted by OAC. Uh, I'm one of your hiking VPs, Doug Finkelstein. Uh, just a little bit of background, I'm from New York. I went to the University of Michigan undergrad. I was an equity trader in Manhattan for four years after that. Um, I'm looking to get into sports, so I moved out to LA to attend Anderson. I'm currently interning for LAFC, the soccer team, doing uh, data analytics and strategy. Um, and we'll see where that goes full time. Hi everyone, my name is Paige LeBlonde and I am the other VP of hiking for OEC with Doug. I'm also a first year at Anderson and my background, I grew up in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I'm actually here right now at my dad's place for a few days, kind of getting some space during quarantine. Um, moved out to Southern California to go to Chapman and I started my career in public accounting at EY and then was working more recently at Capital Group before coming to Anderson. And I came back to school to pursue a career in consulting and I will be doing a virtual uh, internship experience at Deloitte this summer and excited to see where that goes for full time. Um, and really excited to have you all here today and talk to you a little bit more about the ways that you can get outside and even more exciting now the trails are opening up in Southern California. So I'll hand it back over to Doug to kick us off. And just uh, kind of how we'll run this, it, it'll be more conversational than us kind of talking at you. So if you have, you know, any experiences on a hike we bring up that you want to share or even a great a picture that you can pull up and, and show everyone. Um, really anything you want to chime in on, feel free. Uh, this is completely open. All right, we'll start off with just some of the things that regardless of where you are, you should have. Uh, the essential things, water, absolutely. Um, you never know how long you'll be out there. If you stop at the top, anything like that, bring more water than you think you need. Worst case, you, you just bring it back home. Uh, sunscreen, obviously a must. I was out hiking last week for an hour when I thought it was cloudy with no sunscreen on and my back is still peeling from that. Uh, so wear that sunscreen, you need it every single time. Uh, snacks, of course, you just have snacks, you know. <laughs> um, head covering layers, this depends on, on what the weather is. If it's going to be a colder hike or you're going, you know, climbing Mount Baldy or something that uh, during the winter that may be colder, you want layers. And the reverse, if you're going to be out in the sun all day with no, no cover, um, definitely have some form of head covering, whether that's a towel or a hat or something like that. Um, GPS, as some of you heard me talking about earlier, definitely a great thing to have. Uh, not necessary on every single hike, but if it's anywhere where there's a remote chance of you veering off the path or the trail is not marked too well, uh, you definitely want to have that. And of course, the most essential thing, bobcat repellent. Um, they're everywhere, and you should just really have that at all times. Um, I believe we're looking into having Anderson supply that for you, but we'll get back to you on that. Um, Paige, you want to take the recommended? Sure. Um, so some other things that are good to stick in your backpack that aren't necessary are, well, the last one might be necessary when you get to the top, some beer and <laughs> wine, because you always need a little celebration drink to enjoy the view. But then you also, sports drinks or energy drinks, I personally like to bring little um, tablets that are, um, oh God, I can't even remember the word, but they, um, not endorphins, electrolytes. So you can throw it into your water um, mid-hike and it gives you a boost of energy. Headlamps are great, especially when you are hiking in the wintertime, when you lose sun really quick in the evening. A camera, which, you know, if your phone is your GPS, you've got both of those there. And then a picnic blanket or something to sit along the way. It's never a bad idea to have endorphins when you're hiking either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, now we'll get into hikes. We kind of broke it down by area, uh, just to keep it in your head of kind of where everything is. We haven't done all of these. Um, we'll let you know which ones we have and our favorites and things like that. So this is my personal favorite in Santa Monica, Los Leones. Um, you have the option to go about four and a half miles or seven and a half. Um, even if you only do four and a half, you still get amazing views at a kind of vista that's halfway up there. Um, a lot of people choose that option. There's a couple benches, places to kind of hang out. It's a big flat area. Um, and to get there, it's pretty, uh, kind of in nature the it's you know a one or two person path it's not like a fire road or anything like that 
So it's a good way to kind of feel like you're really climbing the mountain. Um, and if you choose to go all the way up to the top, that turns more into a fire road situation and it's fairly steep that second half, um, but very rewarding from the top. Um, there's another much smaller area that a lot fewer people are at. Um, not that many people make the trek all the way to the top. Uh, a great porta potty as well to uh, relieve yourself once you make it all the way up there. Um, I highly rec recommend at least once making it all the way to the top. It, it feels great and uh, the way down is, is much easier. Um, so it is an out and back. It's not a loop. It's, you know, moderate if you go to the, to the middle area and hard if you go all the way to the top. Um, I brought tons of friends here when they visit. I think it's a great place to kind of see the ocean. You can see downtown even from that halfway point. Um, and you get the choice, you know, if you want to keep going, you can go as far as you want before you turn around fairly easily. Uh, Tuna Canyon is one I have not done yet, but I really want to. Um, this one's kind of nestled more in the mountains, provides a great view of the ocean, um, and you can see some great wildflowers if they're in season. Um, it can get crowded, but it'll be more locals and people that live kind of in the mountains or in Malibu or Santa Monica, um, so you won't have too many tourists. Um, it's fairly easy. The elevation gain isn't too bad, um, but it's still a good four miles, and it's a nice loop, um, so you can kind of see different things around the entire way. And you're not just going out and back on the same same path. So Backbone Trail is one of the more popular ones, I think, in Santa Monica. Another one I have not done yet. Um, provides many options, again, where you can kind of keep it short or choose to go longer, depending on what you're feeling, um, with the Loop or the Sandstone Peak. Um, this is also an out and back, so it would be an out and back to the loop, and then you can add on the loop at the top, near the top, for an extra, you know, two and a half miles. Um, and similar to the other hikes in Santa Monica, great views of the ocean. And if you uh, look kind of more inland, you can see the Santa Monica Mountain Range, which always amazes me with how far that goes. And you really don't realize it um, until you're in a plane flying in LAX. That's when you really see it. Cool. So I'll walk you all through some of these Brentwood trails. Uh, so first off, we have Manville Canyon Trail. This one is 7.1 miles with some decent, decent elevation gain. Elevation gain, and you will definitely see crowds when you're on this hike. But the views, just like many of the Southern California hikes within the Santa Monica and Brentwood area, are definitely uh, make it all worth it. Even though it's considered only moderate in terms of difficulty, the distance is something to be aware of. You could be out there anywhere from five to you know, seven hours, depending on what your pace kind of is and if you like to stop along the way. So keep that in mind um, when you're, if you're you know, going out on this hike. Yeah, a few things I'll add about this one. I didn't even know about this hike until a couple months ago after I've been living here for about six months. Um, I love it because it's right in Brentwood, very easily accessible as opposed to the maybe 30 minute drive to get to Los Leones or some of the Santa Monica ones. And within 30 seconds of walking out of the parking lot, you have great views of the mountains and the ocean. So if you really want views with, you know, not having to worry about having to walk too far to get them, uh, this is a great option. And there's also a really old, I think it's called the Nike missile base, something like that. Uh, that was a Cold War missile defense system um, that's run down and kind of just like a cool watchtower now um, that you're I'd say that's you have to go the full seven miles uh, but it's a nice kind of end point take a rest you can get some cool views from the top of that tower um, then you can turn back and head back home I'll add on to this one because this is like my favorite one um, I love this one yeah, it's it's like super accessible um, like Doug just like you were mentioning bringing people from out of town I feel like this is like where I've brought people from out of town that don't like hiking to go hiking because <laughs> you get that like really great view from like you know 10 feet out of the parking lot but um I've also done like morning trail runs there because you get like a really good view both like east and west um from like 10 minute drive outside of like the Brentwood area is, is that the one we did right before the lockdown that right before office hours yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay yeah 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 okay. so you have to like go to the the um the westridge trailhead but it's still like it's above mandeville canyon so it's still called the mandeville canyon trail you're talking about tiger trail right tiger tail 
Uh, no, the um, the oh, yeah. one that we did. Yeah, that one. Right, right. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Like uh, one of the photos from the OAC photo contest was like on that uh, on that trail. Yeah, the one uh, Emily sent in of the them far away with like the sun setting. Yeah. Yeah. Some random woman took the picture and then came up to them later and was like, "Hey, I took a picture <laughs> of you guys." <laughs> it turns out that was the winner. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so then we have another one here in Brentwood, which is the Tiger Tail Trail. As you can see, the elevation gain is pretty significant over a relatively short distance. So anticipate some really good inclines. Some of my favorites are the short dis shorter distances, but the um, nice steepness because you feel like you really accomplish a lot within a quick period of time. So this is an easy one to get in right in your backyard in Brentwood, and it won't take too much time out of your day. Yeah, I've hiked this three times in the last week and a half, uh, so I'm slowly <laughs> becoming an expert. It's very um, steep in parts. It's kind of wavy, where you go up a big hill, then you'll kind of reach a, a little trough or a, a peak, then you'll go down like another steep hill, and it just kind of goes like that for a little while. Um, so great workout where Mandeville will be more – more flat not flat but flatter uh tiger tail you know you can go a mile and feel exhausted just from all the uphill and downhill parts of it and the road to get there you pass lebron's house if anyone is a uh, celebrity stargazer and wants to check that out This one I haven't done, but it looks like it could be a good one if you are in the mood to have more of a urban experience than an outdoor nature experience. Um, I was reading some of the reviews and it says that you'll be hearing the 405 for most of the, the, the hike, which kind of takes away from some of the beauty in hiking. But you do get to see a lot of the houses and the mansions in Bel Air, and you get views of the Getty, which is just a gorgeous museum, and of course the ocean. So something to consider if you are looking to view uh, Bel Air from a hike. Yeah, the views of the Getty are amazing. And you can also get some good views of uh, Mount St. Mary's, I think it's called, the, the school that's up in the hills there. Mm -hmm. the, a very uh, pretty buildings over there. Uh, and Bel Air as well. You could even, something I did last weekend, just go into Bel Air and kind of urban hike your way around there. You can see some amazing houses. Um, and it's some great uh, elevation gains in there as well if you want to exhaust yourself quickly while looking at some cool places. So this is one that I have really wanted to do but haven't had an opportunity to get out there. So expect to see a social distancing event coming up soon on campus groups for this one. Um, this is a loop trail here in Brentwood and in the loop, at the end of the loop, there's some um, like World War II kind of buildings there, which are anti-Semitic in nature. So that's just something to be aware of, but they're definitely historic. And um, there's been a ton of graffiti that's all over them. So it's become a bit iconic in the sense that it really represents LA in a lot of ways because it's been so covered in graffiti. And it's supposed to be like a very interesting hike. Not too bad, not too much elevation gain and a really um, not too far of a hike either. I've never done this one either, so I'll definitely be there. Open up <laughs> the campus groups. Awesome. Okay, this is I haven't done this one. Have you done this one, Doug? I don't think so. They start to blend together after a while, but I don't think I've done this one. So there's a ton of, as you can see, hikes right in Brentwood, which makes it really easy to get outside. And we'll be using this deck as a way for us to kind of plan out some more hikes on campus groups as well. But this is a quick loop that you can do and a lot of pretty wildflowers along the way. Um, sometimes there's a waterfall at the end or at the midway point. So that can be really exciting to see after like a rainy season. I don't think we included too many in here, but there are some hikes in particular that once it rains or we get like a two or three days with rain, those are great hikes to do to see waterfalls. Um, we can update our list and send that out to people if they're interested. All right, on to Malibu. Yeah, perfect that you say that because Solstice Canyon Loop is actually one that has one of those waterfalls. 
And we did this hike with OAC hosted this hike on, on New Year's Eve. So we kicked off the day by doing this quick moderate loop in Malibu and it's beautiful. In the very beginning, you know, there's not much to be seen, but once you get to the top, it's gorgeous panoramic views of the ocean in Malibu and you get to see a bunch of houses in Malibu, Malibu and the canyon as well. And then as you start to make your way back on the loop, you get to an old architecture's house that's just kind of in the middle of nowhere. And it's got a cool story to it that Sam and OAC told us, but I can't remember now. <laughs> so this is definitely one to check out. Um, beautiful, quick, good workout. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one. We went out there. I want to say we had 15 or 20 people. It was a great time. Yeah, yeah it was. Escondido Falls is another one that has a waterfall. I mean, it's the one, the second waterfall gets a lot stronger when it rains, but it's pretty much always there. And the first waterfall gets a lot better when it rains and it's not as strong. Um, the first part of the hike is relatively easy. You could do it with anyone who can walk. And then the second part, it gets a little bit more of a scramble where you're trying to kind of scale some rock. So kind of move forward with caution. Definitely worth it though, if you're into seeing some waterfalls in Malibu, it's a beautiful hike and dogs are allowed on it, which is a plus for anyone who has a pup. I did this hike, I wanna say two months ago. Uh, the second waterfall may disappoint you depending on the rain. It looked like someone was just spitting off of a rock. Uh, <laughs> but getting from the first to the second requires basically scaling rocks. Um, it's not, not all of us made it up to, to that second one. And on the way back, we kind of had to slide down on our butts uh, just to give you kind of a sense of how, how steep it is to get up there. But, you know, if you feel comfortable doing it, I highly recommend it. It's a great feeling to get up to that second one, even if it, you know, isn't as aesthetically pleasing as uh, reviews make it out to be. So I haven't done this one in Malibu, but it's a popular one called Zuma Ridge Trail. Um, it, based on the reviews, there were ocean views almost the entire time. It is on a fire road. So if that's something that you don't enjoy because it feels a little bit too pedestrian, just something to be aware of, but it does mean that there will be well-maintained trails. And especially in a time like uh, this pandemic, you'll be able to stay socially distanced from other hikers a lot easier. So this is a good one if you're looking for some views while staying at distance from everyone. Yeah, I haven't done this one either, but I would equate it to like the Mandeville Canyon of Malibu, where you're on a fire road most of the time. You have views fairly quickly um, and it's fairly popular with uh, other people to do. All right, on to downtown and Hollywood. All right, the Griffith and Hollywood sign. Um, I honestly think this is one and done type of hike. Take it, someone out there to see it. It's not that scenic. There's a ton of people. Part of it's a fire road, but like, of course you need to do it because it's the Hollywood sign. And then I think after that, there's plenty of other hikes in LA that are much more worth your time. So unless it's someone else has a very different opinion, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I totally <laughs> agree with that. And there's honestly like 10 to 15 trails kind of around that area that all kind of branch into each other and go off their own way so you can kind of just explore if you have you know a day where you want to just be over there um, I'm a huge fan of Griffith I also bring anyone out of town to the observatory um, I think that's a, a really fun place to go um, and then you can see the sign from there as well if you don't feel like doing the hike All right, Runyon Canyon, it's a, I would consider it almost like iconic too, to kind of the mid city area, um, very popular hike and you will definitely run into people. It's always really busy, but it has great views. So I would, if you're, find yourself in, you know, the Hollywood area and you're looking for a hike, go Runyon Canyon over the Hollywood sign any day. Yeah, if any of your friends visited LA and took an Instagram picture of them hiking, this is where it was from. Yeah. Uh, so be prepared for a lot of those if you're ever out there. <laughs> but you will see some good dogs too, so it's not all bad. I, all right, so this next section is the SoCal six pack. It's the six pack of peaks. 
um, that are significant hikes. Uh, it's definitely not for beginners. You kind of need to plan a day around this, go early, uh, expect to be there anywhere from seven to 10 or 11 hours. Um, they're all roughly, you know, an hour to an hour and a half, hour 45 away, depending on traffic. Um, this is something that I will absolutely be doing over the course of this year. Uh, so if anyone's interested in joining me on this challenge, uh, feel free to reach out. We'll find a way to put either a Slack group together or, or something like that. I see Noah raising his hand. <laughs> uh, yeah, we will, we will definitely make this happen. Sweet. I'm glad to see people are interested. Um, we'll figure out a way to do it with distancing and whatnot, but I'm, I'm sure we can figure it out. I'm not too worried. So the first one, Mount Wilson, the one of the six that I have done is 14 miles. Uh, it is a loop. I think it's the only one out of the six that's a loop, um, which is kind of nice. Uh, difficulty obviously challenging. Uh, I think it's a great place to start. It's one of the easier of the six and there is a cafe with, I don't know if it's delicious food, but it definitely tastes delicious when you just hike seven miles to get there. Uh, I think I ate like three peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at the top because I just devoured everything at that point. Uh, there's also some cool astronomy um, buildings up there like you can see in this picture. Um, not sure what they do, some government stuff up there, but uh, some cool things going on. There, it's surprisingly more um, crowded at the top than you think, and there's a road for you know workers to get up there and stuff like that. Second one is Mount Baldy. Um, I anticipate doing this actually at the end of this month um, if I can plan appropriately. This is a one of the more popular ones for sure with people. Um, it's just now the snow is starting to melt. It wasn't really too climbable recently. You would have to bring gear for um, hiking in snow and people have died doing this hike. Um, so we wouldn't recommend it until you know that the snow has melted. Um, and if you ever need to get information on that, feel free to reach out to me or um, through some Google research, you can try and find reviews of people that have hiked it recently. And that goes for all of these. Um, you can usually find people that have done it recently. You can kind of tell you the conditions and anything that they stumbled across when they tried to do it. Uh, so this one's 10 miles. Um, you can see elevation gain of 4,000 feet. Uh, you have an option to loop or out and back, depending on kind of which way you go. Uh, and like I said, definitely one of the more signature peaks. It's the one you can kind of see with the snow on top um, when you're going in and out of LA. Next is Cucamonga Peak. I honestly don't know too much about this one. Um, you can see the kind of rock face in this picture. Um, a lot of people I know get pictures on that rock kind of looking over LA. Um, so it's definitely a nice reward for making it all the way to the top. Um, it's fairly in line with the other two at about 11, 12 miles and around 4,000 feet of elevation gain. Uh, this one's an out and back, uh, definitely hard as well. Um, but it could be a great warm-up to try and do Baldy or any of these other ones. They're all good warm-ups for each other. Next, San Bernardino Peak. Um, this is what the mountain range is named after in the National Forest. This is a long one, 16 and a half miles. Um, massive elevation gain at almost 5,000 feet. Um, another out and back, very challenging. Uh, but one of the nice perks of this one is you have 360-degree uh, view of really the whole national forest, both San Bernardino and um, Angeles. And you can see downtown and ideally if the weather's nice all the way over to our neck of the woods and Brentwood and Westwood and the ocean. Next is Mount San Jacinto. Uh, it's 11 and a half miles, another big elevation gain at over 4,500 feet. Um, another out and back, very, very challenging. Um, this one is the farthest east of the six. It's basically in Palm Springs. Um, so could be a good option if you're going to Joshua Tree or Palm Springs for a weekend or just a getaway. Um, you might want to add this to your list then, um, either on the way there or way back. Could be a good And show. also uh, for San Jacinto, I did this one as a backpacking. So you can also make this into like a backpacking trip. And there's also a, a gondola. So if the distance or the elevation game is a bit intimidating there's other options for you to kind of be able to get out there and still enjoy the views it's a, a really awesome hike that's cool i didn't know that how do you pronounce this one 
Georgie. San Gorgonio is how Gorgonio. I pronounce it. Wow, I was yeah. not even close. San Gorgonio. <laughs> uh, by far the longest of the six. 17.3 miles. It's the highest peak in Southern California. Um, elevation gain of basically 6,000 feet. Um, difficulty, as you can see, absolutely brutal. I had a curse word in here. I took it out because this is being recorded. Uh, but that is how hard this is. Um, so be prepared for over 10 hours of hiking. Uh, you're going to want to get there early. And similar to the other ones, you're going to want to make sure there's no snow. But I think we're entering the, the time where you'll be okay with that. I actually did San Gorgonio too, oh. and did this as a backpacking trip though. So, I, you know, a lot of these ones you can kind of play around with the distances and still accomplish the total distance in a weekend. So you could, and since they're all pretty close, you could go out like on a Friday night and go until Sunday. Um, very limited water on this hike. So this is definitely one that you have to pack in everything that you anticipate because it's, yeah, it's brutal in more ways than one. But it's all, all the six pack in particular is also great training if you have any ambitions of doing Mount Whitney, which is what my group kind of used some of these different peaks as training for. So maybe we can hook up with the backpacking team and see if we can kind of dovetail it into a trip there. That'd be amazing. And Paige, when you backpack overnight, are you allowed to go anywhere? Do you need a pass for that? How does that work exactly? So for a lot of these, like for um, San Jacinto and San Gorgonio and San Bernardino, you can just do a fax like a couple days before to get a permit. So you do need an overnight permit, but it's not nearly as difficult to have a spot like it is when you, if you're trying to go to some of the more famous places like Yosemite or Mount Whitney. All right, cool. It's good to know. Yeah. All right, on to the best of the rest. So the Bridge to Nowhere, this one is especially near and dear to Doug and my heart because we had a trip planned out to the Bridge to Nowhere um, right before the pandemic started and we canceled because of rain and then quarantine started. So we will be hosting an OAC hiking slash bungee jump event for this Bridge to Nowhere hike in the fall. Um, it's a pretty difficult hike in terms of distance. It's 9.3 miles, so expect to be out there all day. but in the middle of nowhere, you know, six miles in, you see this bridge, which had initially been constructed because they anticipated going through the mountain range there. Um, and I forget the reason why, I think something happened with how difficult it was to get through the mountain range, so they stopped construction. But you have to cross rivers, so you get your feet a little wet and it's kind of an all together adventure. Yeah, and for admits that are coming in the fall, um, assuming that's when we push this to, which is looking very likely, um, we will have room on that. So we hope you all can attend. And the bungee jumping is something I'm really looking forward to, something I've never done. Same. So Crystal Cove Loop is one of my personal favorites if you find yourself in Orange County. It's a beautiful loop that even though the distance here says 9.4 miles, there's plenty of other loops within the park itself that can be anywhere from like three miles to nine miles. Um, the views of Orange County and the ocean are just simply incredible down there. It's really similar to what you'd experience here in Malibu, but if you find yourself in Orange County, it's a must. And then there's this restaurant that's literally on the sand in Laguna called Beachcomber. And it's a great way to get a drink after your long hike, drink in the appetizer and really reward yourself. So highly recommend. And then potato chip hike. Uh, this is in Poe uh, near San Diego. It's great for photos. Even though it looks like it's super high up and that thing's gonna crack at any moment, it's like maybe five feet to the ground below that. So you might break a leg if it breaks, but I don't anticipate death by any means. Uh, it's pretty unshaded the entire time and it is quite an elevation gain, but it's totally worth it. Um, the picture was so worth it, even though there was a long line, it was a blast. So if you find yourself heading towards San Diego and wanna kind of detour out for a hike, do it. I'd like to see someone do the potato chip hike, Runyon, and the Griffith Hollywood sign in one day. <laughs> we that's, do it for the gram, right? Yeah. yeah. That's how you make it on Instagram. <laughs> uh, 
uh, Antelope Valley it was one of my favorite days in LA so far. Um, you can do up to five and a half miles, but it's really all kind of interconnected mini trails. So you can go as far as you'd like, and it's not much of an elevation gain, but the real reason to go is to see the wildflowers and the poppies. Um, they, I believe they're still in bloom. Um, I went about two months ago and that's when they were really thriving. Tons of people out there. So ideally time it right, maybe a weekday where you can kind of have a little more privacy. Um, but it's kind of just tons of fields like this, uh, tons of different colors and just a great experience. It's about an hour and change outside of LA. Um, so a nice um, activity to, to spend time where it's not too strenuous, but you can get in a good workout and see some great, great flowers. Uh, our last one is Bobcat Territory Trail. It's um, down kind of by the uh, Coliseum. Um, near Marshall School of Business. Um, no one's ever made it past 0.2 miles. Uh, the elevation gain is what's the left of one foot. The route is just out uh, and there's no, there's no back. Uh, it's very easy. So for when you have friends that, don't, that you don't like that are visiting, it's a very safe trail and the only one in LA guaranteed to be free of bobcats. Uh, so that ends our formal presentation. Um, we're happy to stick around and answer any questions. Um, if you feel like emailing us, feel free to do that too. Um, any requests of hikes you'd like to see us do in the future, uh, anything like that, we're happy to try to accommodate. We want to get, get out there just as much as you. Uh, so we're looking for ideas. And we can also send out the deck to everybody. We have links to the different trails um, and for more info and different maps and stuff. I'll uh, stop the recording now, but if anyone has any questions or just wants to chat, we can keep going.